friends uh, welcome back to the lecture series of automotive manufacturing processes and technology this is our lecture number three in the last lecture we had seen uh, something about uh, stamping process uh, what are the advantages of stamping <coughs> we had seen uh, uh, the cost is the biggest uh, advantage uh, even the initial uh, the, some of the costs are very less uh, secondary cost is also very less uh, but apart from that uh, uh, the very good uh, you can say advantage is that you can completely automate the whole setup or complete manufacturing process can be fully automated but yes it requires a very high initial cost okay so not although you can say every as the time passes the cost will not go on increasing it's just the about the initial cost will be uh, high because of the purchase of the automated systems or you can say presses okay so <clears throat> apart from that uh, if let us say you are in a manufacturing uh, means your product is in a manufacturing line uh, or assembly line uh, at that point of time if you are supposed to change the shape of the product then you need to go for customized uh, dies which again will be a costly process so it's better you avoid uh, such kind of uh, things there. Uh, apart from that, we had seen uh, uh, the, some of the categories uh, which fall under the stamping process. So out of that first was blanking, uh, where a punch comes from the top, it forces uh, the workpiece and the workpiece which falls down. Uh, the part which falls down is called as the blank and which remains in the die is called as your die waste. Uh, second process was of punching process uh, the product which falls down here is considered as scrap and the one which remains in die is called as your workpiece uh, so stamping and uh, uh, sorry your blanking and punching both are opposite uh, you can say operations uh, piercing is uh, generation of the hole of any shape uh, which is required and uh, the punch comes uh, or a piercing tool comes and it will pierce in your sheet metal and it will generate a hole Okay, so punching basically uses the punching die uh, set of dies are there and piercing uh, you can do with the help of uh, piercing tool simple okay. uh, sophisticated machinery is uh, not required here so this is what uh, we had seen uh, in the last lecture uh, the diagram of uh, blanking this is what the blanking uh, process uh, this is what the punching process and this is what is your piercing process now moving ahead the next process is uh, drawing process drawing process uh, is uh, doesn't mean it is uh, related to your paper drawing it is basically when you apply a tensile force the stretching of metal takes place okay whenever force has been applied uh, on the workpiece <clears throat> there will be stretching of the metal will take place and this uh, stretching it reduces the overall cross section okay so here you can see this is what the cross section of the initial component and once it has been drawn from the die the cross section is reduced okay so it stretches thinner okay into the desired shape and the thickness a uh, drawing is basically done in cold that is cold drawing is uh, preferred but that doesn't mean that hot drawing is not been done and yes hot drawing is also been done but generally cold drawing can be done so that you can attain the advantage of strain hardening okay some of the other advantages are that accurate tolerances are there grain structure is also good and surface finish is good okay no doubt grain structure is uh, you can say good in hot forming all in hot drying also so before the before moving ahead uh, uh, in your machinery uh, your you need to prepare your workpiece okay so there's just a preparation so workpiece is to be annealed okay why annealing is to be done so that any kind of initial existing stresses if are there they uh, should be removed okay or let us say workpiece has come from some other machine there are chances that uh, if any kind of load was available on that type, um, some stresses, residual stresses might be available in your that workpiece. So that has to be removed. So for that, you can carry out the annealing process. 
apart from that uh, you need to clean the work surface okay that is the you need to clean your specimen okay so cleaning can be done in different methods either you can have an acidic bath or you can go for short blasting and once if you are available with the acidic bath, uh, bath then you need to wash out uh, so that uh, that acid doesn't remain otherwise uh, oxidation may start okay and then you can condition okay the conditioning is to be done uh, with the help of different uh, chemical solutions on the surface okay so uh, why conditioning is to be done so that work surface uh, hold your lubrication okay if let us say if you are going for any kind of a process and if lubrication is required in that process then that lubrication sticks on the surface for that process uh, you can carry out the conditioning operation also okay. so once the workpiece is prepared it is mechanically gripped in your machine okay and then the rest is been pulled so these are the what the initial stages of the drawing uh, before moving ahead actual drawing uh, these are the some of the steps you can carry out on your workpiece so drawing has been classified in two major categories first is sheet metal drawing and second one is bar wire or tube drawing these three are all different types of drawings are available uh, but <coughs> they are um, put in one simple category uh, because it is this three diff are different as compared to the sheet metal drawing okay. so let us see one by one what does this mean sheet metal drawing can be further classified into two different categories that is the shallow drawing and deep drawing uh, shallow drawing are not widely used uh, uh, the drawing process is basically done uh, with this uh, deep drawing okay anyhow uh, shallow drawing is used to describe the process where the depth of the draw is less okay, than the smallest dimension of the opening okay. uh, in other words uh, you can also say that if uh, diameter by height ratio is less than half or 0.5 then it is called as your shallow drawing so uh, drawing generally it leads to wrinkle or you can say scratches mark on the surface and those can be removed by different processes or different uh, techniques and uh, if anyhow on the outer surface it remains then you can go for trimming operation so if uh, diameter to height ratio is less than half uh, then it is called as uh, the shallow drawing operation if it is more than that it is called as your deep drawing so here in the diagram you can see the uh, there are different types of uh, uh, you can say uh, setups are been arranged here on the uh, right side the drawing which is aware the picture which is available to us so deep drawing is basically used for manufacturing utensils pressure vessels gas cylinders uh, cans and different type of components which require uh, depth in them to store something so a blank has been placed how all this thing starts is by that this is what the blank which has been placed here between your punch and die okay it is hold held in position by the holding plate these are the two holding plates are available you can see this is what is your holding plate is there uh, which will insert uh, the pressure okay which will insert the pressure here you can see fh is uh, written here that is your blank holder force fh is the blank holder force and pressed against the die cavity using a solid punch okay so you will be then again with the help of the punch force this will be pulled down so you can see this is the stage number one it is just hold it out this is stage number two this is stage number three that is straightening is taking place here this is stage number four that is compression and thickening of the flange takes place now what happens is let us say if you are not this part is this this holding die this blank holder is basically just to hold the workpiece here okay otherwise what will happen is this will simply move down okay now what happens is uh, when the punch is creating or uh, when it is create when it is drawing at that point of time this holders blank holders will also create a force which is called as blank holding force they will apply the force okay and this force it will be a compression force okay this will be a compression force now once this force are been applied there will be thickening of flange takes place okay the, this flange will thicken off that we'll see how it thickens off uh, but this has to be protected 
okay this thickening is to be protected otherwise uh, the dimensions uh, will change okay so the sheet metal attains the shape of the die cavity of the flat bottom okay slowly and gradually uh, both die and punch should be provided with the corner radius this is what is the corner radius uh, so that uh, shearing doesn't take place otherwise uh, your workpiece will shear off your punch may have the capacity to shear it off okay. so the portion of the blank uh, between die and wall and the between die wall and the punch surface okay that is uh, this area uh, between a die wall and the punch surface that is this area here you can see this one uh, is subjected to the pure tension because uh, this has been pulled down by the punch whereas the portion lower down the near bottom is subjected to the tension and bending okay where this corner edges here they are being subjected to bending as well as the tension force also okay so two different uh, types of forces are been acting here now the portion of the metal blank which forms the flange that is this part so is subjected to the circumferential compressive strength just we had discussed that uh, whenever this blank holder is applying so it is applying a compressive load here compressive stress here okay and buckling and becomes thicker thereof okay so this becomes thicker the flange has therefore to be held down by the pressure pad <clears throat> otherwise it will surface and become buckled here okay so it will because see here the movement of this flange is towards this side okay and the force is been applied from the top apart from that this punch is pulling it down okay so here it is trying to stop the flow here it is trying to move it so there are chances that the buckling may happen here the grains which are trying to move in this direction there are chances that they may grip here okay they will start gripping here so a piling up will take place and that's the reason why it will become thicker and thicker and thicker okay that is the buckle will it will there will be buckling will be happening okay. so this will become uneven like an orange peel okay so a different kind of piling up will take place and that has to be removed okay so this should not affect obviously the the, the blank holder force should not affect the flow of this blank here okay this is again the most important thing other, otherwise this will not be deep drawn okay the component will not be deep drawn if it is where if the uh, blank water force is very high and it is not allowing the material to flow then also there is a problem okay so you need to have a compromised force which will grip it it will not allow to buckle it and apart from it it will allow it to flow so that your workpiece will be generated now the workpiece that is the material should be malleable and ductile okay otherwise it will crack okay under these different kind of induced stresses okay. the wall thickness of the deep drawn component does not remain uniform here the wall thickness does not remain uniform the vertical walls become thinner due to the tensile stress okay the walls which are vertical here that is this things they there are chances that they may become thinner due to the tensile stresses but the thinnest portion is around the bottom corner of the cup okay this is what is the thinnest portion available here okay. and this thinning of sheet is called as the necking this thinning of the sheet that is the thinnest part is called as the necking and if you go beyond that let us say if this blank force blank holder force is very high and here necking has started then the next step of necking will be that means if you keep applying the force then there will be shear available to us that means this blank will create a hole it will tear tear apart your this workpiece and it will come down okay so it will damage your workpiece so this should not happen okay so this is what is your deep drawing so here you can see it has been holded here okay and the punch will come down the punch will come down okay this is what the blank and it will deep draw these things okay so the next category is wire draw bar draw and tube drawing okay this is what is our next uh, topic uh, this i will discuss in the next lecture okay till then thank you